That's right, Joe. And to be sure, there will be a lot of robust debate. Segue. Time to bring in the new hosts of Crossfire. Well, let me help you out with this. Please. On the left. That's good. Oh, Stephanie Cutter, a Democratic strategist who worked in the Obama presidential campaign and administration. On the right. Newt Gingrich, the former Speaker of the House and Republican presidential candidate. The CNN classic Crossfire comes back this fall, but we start it today. <laughs> Caught it's in the crossfire of Chris and I. That's nothing new. Okay, so <laughs> congratulations to both of you guys. Thank this you. is very exciting news for everyone at CNN. Uh, Mr. Speaker, let's start with you. I mean, I want to talk about Edward Snowden and the NSA leaker. I mean, the White House has been talking about, they're trying to, they've, they're saying stuff. They're trying to get Russia and Ecuador to help send him back and get him back to the United States. Do you think they've done enough or they did enough early on to make this happen? Well, look, I, I think they've got to do everything they can to get him back here. I think he's very dangerous. We don't know what he knows. We don't know what documents he's taken. We don't know. He's sitting in Moscow right now, so we don't know what the Russians are learning. Uh, and I just think also as a matter of precedent, you, you want people to have a sense that if you betray the United States and you betray our secrets, that we're going to find you and we're going to get you and we're going to, you know, bring you to justice. I think it's very important. And I think they frankly should probably be more aggressive. I mean, we learned, for example, they hadn't gone to Interpol, mm. so the Russians could say, oh, gee, we don't have the right documentation. So the administration fail here? Well, I, I, I think the administration clearly has not been as aggressive as it should be uh, in order to get that. But I also think this is a big problem for all Americans. Right. And let, let's talk about it as a perception of the country. Stephanie, mm -hmm. uh, Vladimir Putin, in a very odd and mixed metaphor, yet damaging nonetheless, <clears throat> uh, related to America's wants for Edward Snowden as shearing a pig, which I'm not sure you do, by the way. <laughs> and he said that it's too much squeal, not enough wool, which I don't think they have, by the way. But the import and impact of the statement that we are weak uh -huh. was loud and clear. Yeah. Is this a moment where people will look at President Obama and the administration and say, you've hurt us internationally, we are weak, you've taken our mojo. Right. Well, first of all, the person who has hurt us internationally is Snowden. Uh, he violated the nation's trust and put this country in real jeopardy. Second of all, we don't know what's going on behind the scenes between the United States and Russia. You know, having been in government, and, and Newt, you know this too from being in government, you have no idea what the pressure is going on on the inside between the United States and Russia. They so don't I sound think, pressured. Well, we're not in on those conversations. Um, so I think we have to let this play out a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think that this is the first act in a long play, and I think Putin is playing games with us, absolutely yeah. playing but games you know, with us. You also have to recognize, I think, Putin, who was a KGB agent, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. exactly sees himself as a tough guy. Remember the picture of him uh, with no shirt on, having killed a tiger? I mean, <laughs> right. Putin is into this whole, I'm really macho, <laughs> you're not really macho. Uh, and I think that to some extent, we're seeing game playing by him. In the end, the United States is a lot bigger than Russia. And in the end, the United States, if it, if it keeps the pressure up, will, in fact, force the Russians uh, to be cooperative. So Next let's topic. let's talk about uh, the major topic domestically, um, the Supreme Court ruling on same-sex marriage. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of talk about the reaction, the fallout, and what this means in practically in everyday life. But right away, we heard from conservative, um, from many conservatives, Stephanie, that this was another example of judicial activism <laughs> and the justices making policy from the bench. Well, they didn't say that the day before when the Supreme Court overturned the Voting Rights Act or the key provision of the Voting Rights Act. So it always depends on what the outcome is and, and who's decrying judicial activism. You know, I think that there was no other way for the, co the court to rule. Uh, DOMA is discriminatory. There's, there's no other way to look at it. When you're creating a subclass of people through your federal laws, it's discriminatory. And it was a good day yesterday. A lot of us have been working to overturn DOMA for a very long time. And is I think that's why you saw the celebration across the, the country yesterday with people celebrating its overturn. Is there no other way to look at it? Well, I think, uh, <clears throat> look, I think anybody who reads what Justice Kennedy wrote has to be very troubled by the language he used. Because? He, he, well, he in essence said 85 U.S. senators were bigots. He in essence said if you're a, a faithful Catholic, if you're, if you're a fundamentalist Protestant, if you're an Orthodox Jew, if you're a traditional Muslim, you're a bigot. I mean, his language is astonishingly strong and judgmental. And I think that's wrong for the Supreme Court. It's not a political body. It's a judicial body. And having one person get up in the morning and decide, I will now rewrite the Constitution four to four. And so Kennedy, this whole idea that Kennedy's the decider, <clears throat> that's a pretty unstable country when one lawyer gets to be the constitutional well, convention. It was five to four, so it's five joining in that opinion. And I think that if you polled those senators who voted for DOMA many years ago, many of them would say that that vote was wrong. I mean, President Bill Clinton signed it, and he came out against it saying it was the wrong thing to do. So, so bottom line, what do you think, uh, Speaker? Do you think that same-sex marriage should be the law of the land? No, I mean, again, as somebody who believes the marriage between a man and a woman, I think there are a lot of arrangements you can make 
I don't think it's called marriage. But that, that's my view. And I think that it's much better to work it out in the political process than it is to have judges impose their bias uh, on a whole country. Federally or state by state? How should it be done? You know, I think that uh, marriage is traditionally done state by state, but I think the federal government and the federal court system has to set up some parameters there. All right. Crossfire, back at you. When are we launching? The fall. This fall. <laughs> this fall. All right. So what we do you, got... do? you think we could take them or no? I don't think we could take them. I can do a lot. I <laughs> cannot take these two well, down. Why don't you guys come on the show? They're too yeah. quick. They're too quick. They're the too last smart. day I ever want to be on TV, I will come on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you both. Great to see you. And huge congratulations. Thank so you. much Thank excitement you. here at CNN for that.